Remember to subscribe, comment, share, like. Help us reach 500 subscribers. Welcome to The Awakening. Black Women United. I am your host, Sherry Dani, and this is Sunday Morning Service. What if a country could be accused of genocide? Recently, South Africa has made such an accusation against Israel at the International Court of Justice. This is a complex and serious matter that demands our attention. The heart of the accusation lies in South Africa's belief that Israel's actions in Gaza are genocidal in character and violate the Genocide Convention. This international treaty, signed by both nations, outlaws acts committed with intent to destroy, in whole or in part, a national, ethnic, racial, or religious group. This is a significant development in international politics. Let's dive deeper into the details. South Africa's move is a serious one, accusing Israel of genocidal acts in Gaza. But what are the specifics of this accusation, and why now? South Africa, a nation that has historically grappled with its own human rights issues, has boldly stepped forward, filing a case against Israel at the International Court of Justice. This move is not one to be taken lightly, as the accusation is a hefty one. Genocide. South Africa contends that Israel's military actions in Gaza are not merely acts of war, but genocidal in character and intent, aiming to destroy the Palestinian people in Gaza. But why this accusation, and why now? To understand this, we need to delve a bit deeper. South Africa draws comparisons between Israel's policies in Gaza and its own dark past under the apartheid regime. This comparison suggests that South Africa sees a reflection of its own history in the plight of the Palestinians, a history it is keen to prevent from repeating itself elsewhere. The case is built on alleged violations of the Genocide Convention, a convention both Israel and South Africa are signatories of. South Africa is pushing for provisional measures, including an immediate ceasefire. These measures are not just symbolic, but are intended to protect the rights of the Palestinian people and ensure Israel's compliance with the Genocide Convention. This move by South Africa is more than just a legal maneuver. It's a statement on the international stage. It signifies South Africa's commitment to human rights and its willingness to hold other nations accountable. It's a call for justice that extends beyond the courtroom, reaching into the realm of international diplomacy and potentially affecting the dynamics of power in the region. But what does this all mean in the grand scheme of things? This case, this accusation, is not just about Israel and South Africa, it reflects the global concern over the situation in Gaza and the need for accountability and justice. It calls into question how we, as an international community, respond to accusations of genocide and how we uphold the principles of human rights. South Africa's move has not gone unnoticed. This could potentially have serious repercussions. God is not real. War is caused by men, and some women uphold it. This is a battle for resources, land, labor, and capital. This is gangster shit. Those with the biggest guns win. Israel has not taken these accusations lightly. They have vehemently rejected the accusations. But what does this mean for the ongoing conflict? In the face of serious allegations of genocide, Israel has risen in staunch opposition. Dismissing the claims as unfounded, Israel has labeled these accusations as a blood libel. This term, heavy with historical implications, suggests that Israel perceives the allegations as not only false, but maliciously so. In the midst of this growing international controversy, Israel's stance remains unwavering. They maintain that their actions in the ongoing conflict are justified, asserting that the military operations in Gaza are a necessary response to threats against their nation's security. This steadfast position highlights the deep-seated tension and complexities inherent in this protracted conflict. Interestingly, this legal wrangle comes at a time when the International Criminal Court, or ICC, is already conducting an investigation into possible war crimes and crimes against humanity committed by both Hamas and Israel. Israel's vehement rejection of the genocide accusations could potentially cast a new light on this separate yet connected investigation by the ICC. It's worth noting that Israel has not yet decided on its course of action should the International Court of Justice rule against it. However, it's clear that they expect to be able to present a robust defense. This assertion further underscores their firm belief in the legitimacy of their actions in the face of South Africa's accusations. God is not real. War is caused by men. And some women uphold it. This is a battle for resources, land, labor, and capital. This is gangster shit. 
those with the biggest guns win. The official stance from Israel also extends to their military operations. They continue to assert that all military actions in Gaza are conducted in consultation with legal experts to ensure compliance with international law's boundaries. This assertion suggests confidence in their adherence to international law, even in the face of serious allegations. With Israel's strong rejection of the accusations, the stage is set for a significant legal battle. God is not real, war is caused by men, and some women uphold it. This is a battle for resources, land, labor, and capital. This is gangster shit, those with the biggest guns win. The world is watching closely as these events unfold. But what could be the potential outcomes and how could this affect the wider geopolitical landscape? The international reaction to this case has been varied, reflecting the complexity of the situation. Countries such as Turkey have publicly backed South Africa's genocide claim against Israel, indicating a potential shift in alliances and diplomatic relations. As the court case progresses, other countries may choose to express support for either side, further polarizing the international community. We may see a reshuffling of alliances, with countries aligning based on their stance on this case. The potential outcomes of the case are numerous and could significantly impact the ongoing conflict. If the International Court of Justice rules in favor of South Africa, it could lead to an increased pressure on Israel to change its policies in Gaza. This could in turn affect the ongoing peace negotiations and alter the course of the conflict. On the other hand, if the court rules in Israel's favor, it might embolden Israel's stance and could potentially escalate tensions further. This outcome could also set a precedent for future cases involving accusations of genocide, impacting how international law is interpreted and applied. The wider implications for international law and politics are significant. This case underscores the importance of international courts in resolving disputes between nations and holding countries accountable for their actions. It brings to the fore the power of international law in shaping global politics and influencing national policies. Regardless of the outcome, the case is a reminder of the ongoing struggle for peace in the Middle East and the role that the international community can play in resolving conflicts. It's a stark reminder that the road to peace is fraught with challenges and that diplomacy and international law are key tools in navigating these challenges. As we watch this case unfold, we are reminded of the importance of international law in resolving disputes and holding countries accountable. This case represents a significant moment in international politics. It brings to the forefront the ongoing tensions between South Africa and Israel, and more broadly, the complexities of international law and the weight of genocide allegations. The International Court of Justice's decision, regardless of its outcome, will undoubtedly send ripples through the global political landscape. Its implications could reshape how nations navigate warfare and human rights. This case is not just about South Africa and Israel, it's about the broader narrative of accountability and justice in our world today. Remember to subscribe, comment, share, and like. Help us reach 500 subscribers. Thanks for watching The Awakening.